Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I am so happy to see you all here. So in the last video, we spoke extensively about how DESeq2 works to identify differentially expressed genes. In this video, I want to demonstrate how to use this package in R and perform uh, this analysis to identify genes that have differential uh, gene expression patterns between two conditions. For today's tutorial, we'll be using this vignette, uh, the DESeq2 standard workflow vignette, and we'll be using this data set. So this data set is publicly available and it's also available as a bioconductor package for anyone to be able to download and process the data. In our data set, uh, RNA sequencing is performed on four airway smooth muscle cell lines, which are treated with uh, an asthma medication called dexamethasone. So dexamethasone is used by asthma patients to help them reduce their inflammation in the airways. Uh, so in our data set, we have four cell lines and each of them have one treated and the untreated sample. So the goal of our analysis is to understand the transcriptional changes occurring due to treatment with dexamethasone. And our requirements for today is uh, we'll be using three packages. We'll be using DESeq2, we'll be using Tidyverse to um, manipulate the data and we'll be using the airway package. So this is essentially where we'll get our data from. This is a bioconductor package. So now let's switch screens to our studio and let's get started. Uh, this is going to be fairly uh, straightforward tutorial. Uh, all the steps that I'm going to run today are already present in the um, uh, DESeq2 vignette uh, and I'll be adding the link to that vignette in the description below. So the first step is that we will be loading our libraries. So as I said, the data is available in the bioconductor package called Airway. I have retrieved the data, wrangled it and saved it into .csv files. As you can see these files in my folder here. So all the steps to do that are present in a separate script, which I will upload to my GitHub and put the link to my GitHub in the description below. So before we go ahead and read in our data, uh, this workflow has three major steps. So the first step is to read in the data and get the data in the right format. The second step is to create a DESeq uh, data set. And the third step is to run DESeq function, uh, the function that essentially performs the differential expression analysis. So let's first read in our count data. So I will be reading in the CSV files. And we can see that our counts data has over 64,000 rows and eight columns. So now let's take a look at our counts data now. So here we can see that as rows, we have gene IDs. Uh, these are ensemble gene IDs and the columns here are the sample names. So now we do not lo know by looking at the uh, column names, which of these samples are treated with dexamethasone and which are untreated. So let's read in the information about the column. So basically I'll save it as column data and read the CSV file. Now that we have read the column data, let's open and see that uh, we have information about what corresponds to the cell line, what sample name corresponds to what cell line and whether it's treated or untreated. So before we go ahead and create a DEC data set, we have to make sure that the column names in our counts data matches with the row names in our column data. So basically the column names here should match the row names in call data. And also they should be in the same order. Otherwise DESeq would uh, throw an error. So the first thing is that let's make sure that all the columns that are present in our counts matrix is also present uh, as rows in our um, sample information. So column names in our counts data should be present in row names for our call data. And we see that we get a value true, which means that we all the values that are present in the columns are also present as row names in the call data. Also to ensure that they are in the same order, we repeat the similar steps. We're now just making sure they are in the same order. And that is also true. So what I mean by that is essentially we have uh, this sample ending ending in 508 
uh, is as a first sample and then we have a sample ending in 509 as a second sample. So in this data frame, the call data, we should have the first row name as the sample ending in 508 and the second uh, sample as 509. So the order, of, order of these column names here should be the same as order of the rows. So we can see that the first sample here is the sample ending in 508. The second sample is the sample ending in 509. So we are ensuring that the order here is the same as well. So that makes us uh, come to the second step uh, that is to construct a DEC data set. So in order to do that, we have a function called DEC2 data set from matrix. And the first uh, parameter would be counts. So we provide it with our data frame called counts data. The second is the call data or the, the information about the samples. So we have it saved in call data uh, data frame. And the last option is the design. Um, we need to define the design uh, for our, our data set. So that would be dexamethasone. So because uh, in our column data set, we have only one um, design factor here and that is the dexamethasone. So basically that gives us the status of which samples are treated and which samples are not treated. So basically in our analysis, we want to compare between samples that are treated versus samples that are not treated. So if you're not sure about what the design uh, factor means, uh, please uh, make sure you check my previous video out where I explain uh, this concept. So uh, I'm using, I'm going to use dexamethasone as my design um, factor a small d and I will save it in an object called dds. So the um, parameter is not counts and is rather counts data. So I just changed that because I got an error. And I'm going to rerun this again. So now we have our uh, DEC data set ready. So just taking a quick look at that, we, we can just type DDS and we can see that it's a DEC data set object. We have these many rows and these many columns and we have row names as genes and we have counts saved in assay and we have column names as these names. And basically the, the, we have two column data, we have cell line and we have dexamethasone. So it corresponds to the data that is present here. There are a couple of things we can do before running differential expression analysis. So we can uh, perform some pre-filtering on our DEC uh, data set object. So we can remove ro rows that have low gene counts across all the samples. Uh, again, this is a recommended step and it's not a required step, uh, but it's beneficial uh, because it helps to reduce the size of DEC data set object as well as increase the speed of computation on this object for the following steps. So I'm going to remove all the rows uh, that have at least 10, that have less than 10 reads across all the samples. So let's start by calculating row sums for uh, the eSeq dataset object and keeping only those rows that have at least 10 reads across all the samples. So let me show you what the keep variable has. So now it has all the gene IDs uh, with the value true and false. If the uh, rows fulfill the criteria uh, and fulfills the condition, then we have a value true. If it does not fulfill the condition, then it has a value false. So now we can use these logical values to subset our DC dataset object. And now when you take a look at the DC dataset object, you can see that we have filtered, filtered out so many rows. Because if you remember, we had over 64,000 rows and now we have over 22,000 rows here. So we have filtered out uh, so many rows that had uh, such low gene counts. So the next thing that we need to do is to set a factor level. So going back to the column data, here, essentially, what we want to do is compare between treated samples and untreated samples. So here we have two values. We have two levels, rather. We have treated and untreated. 
so we need to tell DEC which level uh, to compare against so we want to tell DEC use untreated as our reference level so we can compare our treated uh, with the untreated so we can do that by relevel and using our dseq2 dataset object we define the we, we let them know the reference level which is untreated so to treat to compare the other levels with the untreated and save it back to dexamethasone and run this so now when we just run this we'll be able to see that now we have two levels and this is our reference level so it's written as the first level and this is the second if we don't mention this uh, uh if we don't explicitly say which level we want to be used as a reference level it will just alphabetically choose uh, out of all the uh, levels and just use that as the reference level now we come to the third step of our workflow which is to run our deseq function on our um, DEC dataset object and we can save it back to the same object you can see that it's estimating size factors estimating dispersions then uh, working on gene wise dispersion estimates mean dispersion relationship final dispersion estimates and fitting a model uh, we discussed all of the steps in uh, my previous video so if you want to understand what each of these steps does uh, please make sure you check my previous video out so before we go ahead and explore the results of differential expression analysis i want to quickly make a note here about uh, technical replicates so if our data set has technical replicates then we need to collapse them before we perform the differential expression analysis uh, dec provides a function called collapse replicates to perform this uh, task but please make sure that you're collapsing just technical replicates and not collapsing the biological replicates and you should never collapse the biological replicates all right so now we can go ahead and save the results from the de seek dataset object and we are saving it in an object called res and to view the results we can just type res and run this and we can see that this is what our results look like so there are a lot of things to talk about here so the first thing is the log to fold change is calculated for in the design factor uh, dexamethasone uh, between the treated and the untreated uh, levels so whatever values we see here for the fold change are all in the treated because the treated is compared with the untreated the statistical test used is the wall test here and this data frame has uh, multiple columns so the first column here is base mean so the base mean is nothing but the average of the normalized counts taken over all the samples the log to fold change is the fold change of this uh, gene uh, in the treated condition when compared with the untreated. So the positive values are the upregulated genes in the treated condition and the negative values are the downregulated genes in the treated condition. This column provides the uh, standard error estimates for the log to fold change. The stat here, these values are the wall test values for these genes. The p-value here is the p-value of the test statistic for this gene and the p-adjusted value is the um, corrected p-values for multiple testing. Just to add a note about the p-value adjustment here, we need to correct the p-values for multiple testing is because whenever we perform a statistical test, we use a p-value of 0.05. So 5% of our um, differentially expressed genes are not really differentially expressed, but they are only due to random chance and the drug has no real effect on them. So that means uh, in our data set, we have around 22,000 genes. So 5% of 22,000 is 1,100 genes. So in our list of the genes being differentially expressed, 1,100 of those genes are false positive and these are really huge number. So in order to um, uh, account for that problem, there are various methods to adjust the p-values and EC2 employs uh, these methods to adjust the p-values uh, to avoid detection of false positive genes. 
So let's explore our results a bit more. Let's get a summary for our results. When we run this, we get essentially how many genes are being upregulated, how many are downregulated, how many of them are outliers, and how many of them have low counts. Uh, currently, it is using an adjusted p-value threshold of less than 0 0.1. Uh, we can change this. So in order to do that, we can type results um, ps and alpha less than 0 0.01. And we can save this as one run this and rerun the summary on 0.01 so now we can see that with uh, the adjusted p-value threshold of less than 0.01 we get different numbers of upregulated genes downregulated genes outliers and the genes having low counts we can find the information about the comparisons made under the results name here so in our case, we have made a comparison between treated and the untreated from the design factor dexamethasone. Uh, but let's say if, if in, any, uh, in any data set there are multiple levels, so let's say there are, and this is just an example to explain to you, that let's say there is treated four hours, treated eight hours, and there is untreated. And let's say you want to compare each of these levels with the ref untreated, which is your reference level. So in that case, you can use the contrast. So we'll use the results function, provide the, uh, the, uh, the object and define our contrast. So in this case, the first variable, the first uh, value will be our um, design factor. The second would be the level that you want to compare. So let's say if we had these levels, maybe I want to compare the treated for four hours level with the untreated. And this will give you uh, all the genes that are upregulated or downregulated in your uh, in the in the condition where your uh, cell lines are treated for four hours with dexamethasone versus the control. You can also use the other levels to compare with this level. So basically, this provides you to compare between levels. In our case, since we have just one level being compared to the reference, uh, we don't really need to use the contrast because we had already defined that we want to use our untreated as the reference level and we are just going to compare the treated level with the untreated. Talking about visualization aspect of the results, uh, there are various ways to visualize this data. Uh, we can also create volcano plots uh, to visualize which genes are upregulated and downregulated. Uh, one plot that we can create is an MA plot. So MA plot can be created using the plot MA function. So the MA plot is basically a scatter plot of log to full change versus the mean of the normalized counts. So essentially this plot tells us uh, and shows us the genes that are differentially expressed and the genes that are colored in blue are uh, uh, significantly differentially expressed genes and they have adjusted p-values of less than 0.05. Uh, you can also see some smaller triangles towards the edge of the plot, which indicates that they, these genes have higher uh, fold changes and uh, the direction of the triangle tells us the direction of their fold change. In this plot, we would hope to see genes in the upper right or the lower right quadrant uh, of this plot, which means that these genes would have high mean of normalized counts and high log fold changes, uh, which would make these candidates some very interesting candidates uh, to be further looked into. This is the most basic workflow to perform gene expression analysis using DESeq2 package. Uh, I will be adding the link, uh, links in my description uh, to the vignette I followed, uh, the GitHub link where I will be uploading all my scripts, including the script to retrieve the data from the bioconductor package. And also some additional links which I think will help you to understand some of these things better. If you found this video helpful and informative, please make sure you hit the subscribe button, like the video, share it, and leave your comments under the comment section. Until next time, see you.